What up everybody out there in the YouTube world? It is April 13th, 2013. Haven't made a video in a while. I feel a little inspired to make one. I'm driving around town right now. Just picked up some nice fruits and vegetables. About to go home and be juicing them like a madman. Roll this window up, get that glare out. Sun is shining bright today. Just want to make a video talking, uh, you know, about a verse in the book of Revelation when it's talking about the thunderings and the earthquakes and loud noises going off and the Ark of the Covenant being seen. We're at that point, I feel, we're at that point where we're being revealed what's in the Ark, what's you know, the things that we have forgotten about thousands of years ago that when God ordains, where when the time is at its right moment, he will have two witnesses to, that will have all power. I mean, they'll have power, it says, to make it rain in chapter, I think, Revelation chapter 11, I think, is when it's talking about the two witnesses. And, um, and to shut the heavens, to make it make a drought. They'll have power to do anything. Anybody who does not hear their message, which they're witnessing and giving a testimony of Jesus Christ, anybody who does not hear the message of the two witnesses, they will be shut off. They will be damned. And they come right, right at the peak, right at the tip of when the mark of the beast is being issued. That's why, you know, it's right for that in Revelation if you follow the timeline of Revelation. And don't take Reve the book of Revelation out of context like so many people do continually. Uh, there's a reason why that book has more commentaries written and more videos and more opinions about it than any other book. And in my opinion, it's because they miss everybody's messed up on the first three chapters of the book. They're not getting the first three chapters they're not quitting eating the meats that are sacrificed to idols that Jesus says two or three times. They're not getting the tree of life. They're not getting the manna. And they're not obeying. They're not following Jesus. Literally following Jesus. If you're following somebody and you're going through a field that's grown up, there's going to be a little path left. Well, when Jesus come, the field was grown up. Everybody was off track, and he made a path. And that path is still shining. If if we will really get to the fulfillment of what Jesus did, and quit, quit being afraid. Quit being afraid of really doing what he did. We got all these churches that worship Jesus, and but say they follow him. And then they they mess up on the simple the simple ingredients. They don't even baptize. Jesus said to be born again, you must be baptized in water and spirit. Plain and simple. Well, you must be born again. Well, in order to be born again, you must be baptized by water and spirit. And we're not even getting the water part. So how are we ever going to get the Holy Spirit part if you're not even getting the easy fundamentals? How are you going to get them things that are tri really tripping people up? You know, them things that the Apostle Paul was talking about. They would make certain foods illegal that he says, he's telling Timothy in chapter 4 of the first book of Timothy. You know, in the end, people would pervert the way of God. They would leave God's way and choose man's law. If that's not what's happening today, I don't know what's happening. There's a reason why we got more cancer. There's a reason why we got more disease in this country and anywhere else. Same way Egypt, God told the Israelites, if you'll follow my way, I will not let none of these diseases come upon you. Folks, there's no different today. They said it'll be like Egypt, spiritual Sodom and Egypt in the end. And that's, that's America. It's the whole world. It's because the Roman culture took over the whole world. But America is the... We're that whore. I mean, we're straight up come, come and, you know, jump in our sin and swim around in it and be merry. Well, no, actually, we want to be merry. We want to be merry in this world. We want to be happy. We want to 
help people heal. Because just as Moses was helping people in Egypt get over diseases, we can be doing that too. It's no different. It's no different. Jesus said that you must know Moses, you must know the prophets, and you must know the Psalms in order to know him. So many people today don't even study the Old Testament. They don't study Moses. They don't study the Psalms. They don't study the prophets because that's, that's the stuff I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand that. I need a commentary and my preacher to explain it to me. Well, folks, your preachers aren't explaining it. You know, right now is when God said he'll open up them heavens, open up them doors, and dump down a blessing that you won't even be able to receive to those who are listening to those who are trying, to those who are, you know, doing their best to follow me. You know, he knows when certain situations are beyond our control, but he also knows when certain situations are in our control, that we can make that right decision when he'll lay two courses out in front of us and say, what are you going to choose? Just like on the Matrix, you're going to choose the red pill, you're going to choose the blue pill. One of them leads to life, one of them leads to death. The way to life in this world, it don't even look possible. But it is possible. Because God will He'll He'll bite, He'll He'll snap them serpents' heads off, you know. He talks about in the book of Amos that He'll allow the serpent to bite some people. Well, He's allowing it to bite the ones who know better than to be doing what they're doing. And they just continue to keep doing it. And do it in a way that they mock people and stuff, you know. And, and a lot of it's to deal with food. Nobody ever wants to address the food topic here in America because we'll address everything. Oh, drunks, you know, they should get out of the bars. Or heroin addicts, they just need to get off Skid Row. And people doing cocaine, they just need to, you know, we got a solution for all that. Just quit. Quit doing that. Well, how about our problem here in America could be that we overeat pork something that we shouldn't be eating and they'll say well Jesus said it's not what enters the man that defiles the man it's what comes out of the man well that's true so you're going to justify eating pork which something Jesus never put in his body if he was the son of God which he is the son of God why, why would you put it in if you're following him why would you eat something that the guy you're following didn't how do you justify that? I personally can't. I ate it my whole life. I ate it for 24 years straight. And then once I started, you know, really studying my Bible and not just what a sermon or a preacher was telling me, I felt convicted. I felt convicted to quit. I felt really convicted. And I prayed about it. I prayed for strength. I prayed for help because it wouldn't take long for me to notice that I was addicted. That it was a very addictive thing eating like I was and I realized I had made myself sick to a point I'd made myself overweight and I made myself not feel good due to my lifestyle decisions and I didn't just eat pork every once in a while and nor do I think anybody's going to hell for eating pork but I will say that once you quit it is absolutely amazing and once you do You'll realize them things. Like I said, in America, we eat more pork than any other country in the world. We have more cancer. We have more multiple sclerosis. We have more disease than anybody in the world. But then we're, we got such a good health care. Well, why do third world nations who live off you know, pecans that they ration and pick up off the ground not have the diseases we have? But we're overdoing it, you know. And we've got a we've got a platter laid out in front of us, and we can't stop. It's like I just can't stop. I'm hooked. And a lot of stuff they put in our foods and stuff they they literally got us hooked. They got us addicted. And people do need help. And there's a way out. There is a way out. But we got to start teaching the word of God in order to give people that avenue for assistance to get out. They need that oil that Jesus put on people and anointed people that it talks about in Mark chapter 6 you know that the apostles they anointed the sick with oil well people who overeat and, and are glutton and 
you know, overeat meat as it talks about in Proverbs chapter 23 and how it's the, the same thing as being drunk. So like if you're, if you're talking about people being drunk, being wrong, and you're sitting there and you're overeating flesh of animals, you're doing no justice. You're only making your judgment book that Jesus and God will open up for us on judgment day thicker. You're only making it thicker. And me personally, I want mine as thin as possible even though I know I've did a lot in my life to make that book a little bit thick. But I'm doing my best to thin it out and to have where it says I'll remember them sins no more. I'm, I'm trying my best, and it's, it's a work in progress. I'm making this video because we're in the times of discernment. We are in the times of a justification and being justified, but... If you're sinning, you're in the times of where you will be stuck in that sin forever. You won't ever be able to get out of it. And that'll be your justification. For those that are working and building the kingdom and serving and trying to listen to the word of God, like it talks about in the book of Amos, there's going to be a famine in the end, but it won't be a famine, it says, of rain or you know crops growing. It's going to be a famine of hearing the word of God you know people are going to get dreams and visions it says and the prop, the prophet said but there will be a famine going on when, pe when God has given them dreams and visions and it will be a famine of discerning what they mean so many people tell me these dreams all the time and I'll just sit there and tell them right back you know what I think it means and they'll just always well I never thought of it that way and I'm like you know I'm not saying I can discern dreams or do anything like that but people tell me dreams and they seem like they're all the same they're all different dreams but the 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 message that i feel god's trying to get through to people that it seems like they're all the same and it's giving clues upon that ark when when it's being revealed back and some people may be sitting there actually waiting on the ark to be found, and maybe it will be. I don't know. I'm not going to claim to know that. But I think it's more important that the church, any, any and everybody, because it's salvation for everybody. I'll say that. It is for everybody. Anybody, you know, God's trying to get us back to that. He's trying to get us to see that the manna that's in it, the anointing oil that's in it, Aaron's rod that's in it, the incense they got in it, the golden bowls, all that that's in the ark, you know, is our solution. And it's it's all the stuff that Jesus, he, he taught it. It's, it's very clear. I mean, it's in the revelation. And you got to understand Moses, like Jesus said. So, I mean, for a lot of people, we need to be studying Moses. We need to be studying Exodus because really we're in Exodus again, in my opinion, for the third time. This is the third woe. We've um, left Egypt. We've left Babylon, been taken to Babylon. We're, we're in the third woe. It's just all there is to it. We're in America. And if we're taking that as it, a lot of people said that, which this is going by other people's dreams that, you know, that this is the Passover again, that we're in the Passover. But it's, it's not that it's different. It's, it's the same as last time, but it's, there's more on line this time. There's more at stake because we have these phones, we have computer, we have this avenue of knowledge and information that it talks about in Daniel chapter 12 when knowledge and information increases we, we don't no longer have an excuse. This is the time of when ignorance, it says God overlooked our ignorance for a while, but we're now in the time. He can't overlook it no more. This is ridiculous. He can't overlook us being, we got TVs, we got phones, we're connected in all ways. We, we don't have an excuse to be ignorant anymore. Our only way we can be ignorant is by choice. And unless you're a young child or unless you're a real elderly person, us, my age, there's no excuse. There's no excuse. We got it all. So I'm done with this video. Peace and love to everybody. I hope I can touch or inspire at least one person. Open, read your Bible, 
and read it with an open heart. Thank you. Peace.